You know, in the almost two years that have elapsed since Donald Trump first burst onto the scene as a presidential contender, a lot of things have been said about him. An awful lot. By his detractors, myself included. That he's a racist, that he's a sexist, that he's an Islamophobe, that he's a xenophobe, that he's a demagogue, that he's an authoritarian. All of these things are true to varying degrees. But at the end of the day, the main thing that has really driven me crazy about Donald Trump, first as a presidential candidate and now as a president, is that he's just plain clueless, ignorant, dim-witted, dumb, 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 dumb. Donald Trump is a buffoon. And that just may be his biggest liability in the long run. More than the bigotry, the xenophobia, the complete disregard for the Constitution, the legal system overall, for basic concepts of logic and factual accuracy. More than any of that, the man just does not have it up here. He's just not playing with a full deck of cards. And how do we know? Well, obviously he's given us countless pieces of evidence to that effect so far. The most recent example is this whole James Comey firing thing. Let's try and get this straight, okay? Let's see if we can break this down and really make sense of the senseless. James Comey is the same man whom Trump and his supporters and countless other Republicans condemned last summer for not recommending that Hillary Clinton be prosecuted for that whole email server thing. They were furious that Hillary had supposedly been allowed to get away with murder, figuratively speaking, although you can never be too sure if Republicans are only speaking figuratively when they accuse Hillary Clinton of murder because they've actually accused her of literal murder many a time in the past. Trump and countless other Republicans couldn't express their frustration with Comey for letting Hillary Clinton off the hook. Personally, I always suspected it wouldn't make a huge difference anyway because even if he had recommended those charges, I had a hard time imagining Loretta Lynch's Justice Department actually pressing those charges against Hillary Clinton in the middle of the presidential election campaign. So maybe the whole point was really moot. But then along comes the fall of 2016. Along comes that message that Comey sent to those congressional committee chairmen talking about how a certain aspect of the investigation was being reopened with, what, less than two weeks to go before Election Day? All of a sudden, James Comey became the hero of Republicans, including Donald Trump. Trump himself praised Comey for having the guts to put that message out there and send that information to Congress. And of course, a lot of people have attributed Trump's eventual win to that announcement from Comey. Now, all of a sudden, Trump fires Comey just like that, and he can't even get his story straight when it comes to his reasons for doing so. First, he doesn't make it clear what the exact reason was. He allows his flunkies, Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Vice President Mike Pence, to go out there and claim that it was actually the Deputy Attorney General who recommended to Trump that he remove Comey from his office. And yet, when Trump is actually interviewed by Lester Holt, he actually says, actually, no, I was going to uh, fire Comey. I was going to get rid of him. So much for all those assurances that were given by Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Mike Pence and the rest. Trump can't even stay on message enough to do right by his spokespersons, his surrogates, the folks who are out there on the front lines trying to defend him and clean up after his messes. That's what happens when you agree to work for a liar and a clueless buffoon like Trump. You can't count on the guy to do right by you. You can't count on him to stay on message and not make you look stupid by putting out a message that totally contradicts the excuse that you've made for him a mere matter of days after you've made it. You can't count on him to do that. That's why I could never, ever serve as a spokesperson for someone like him, even if I shared his political views, which of course I don't. Now, Trump has to cook up this whole excuse about how Comey was a grandstander, how he was a showboat. Imagine Donald Trump, Donald Jackass Trump of all people, of all of God's children, accusing someone else of being a showboat and a grandstander. Wow, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Really? Now we're in a situation where people are more than ever suspecting that this whole Russia thing, the role of Russia in the election, doesn't pass the smell test. Now Trump has fired a man who was in charge of one of the investigations into possible collusion between Trump's campaign and the Russians. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I'm aware that so far, the several investigations into that very matter have yet to turn up any hard evidence of that collusion. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if there was no official collusion. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump has really just coincidentally served as a sort of useful idiot, to borrow a phrase that Joseph Stalin reportedly used to refer to his fellow travelers in the West, whom he was able to manipulate for his own political purposes. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump didn't officially collude with the Russians, but simply was so in love with Vladimir Putin because we know he has this long-standing love affair with demagogues and tyrants and strongmen the world over for at least a generation now. And it just so happened that it suited Putin's purposes to meddle in the U.S. election, to do all those hacking jobs and so on, to embarrass Hillary Clinton, wrong-foot her, cast her in the most negative possible light, and ultimately throw the election Trump's way. That could be all it is. But we also hear from reports that Trump was furious about the level of attention that this whole Russia investigation has been getting ever since he took office, that his frustration has been mounting, and that he was upset with James Comey for continuing to shine so much limelight on it. So even if Trump isn't technically guilty of what he's being investigated for, namely officially colluding with the Russians, colluding with their meddling in the U.S. election, even so, he knows that as long as this story remains in the headlines, it's going to make him look bad. And for that reason, he fired Cohen. Now, how is this evidence of Trump's low intelligence? Well, let's see. The investigation's still ongoing. What good did it do to fire Comey? What good did it do? Break that down for me, will you please? Firing Comey doesn't end the investigations. If anything, it only ramps up the pressure. Even if Trump is not guilty of that collusion of which he's being accused or suspected in many quarters, still, the suspicion that that may be the case, that the accusations may be well-founded, is only going to augment now. It's only going to increase. And now, folks are calling for a special prosecutor to handle the investigation. Not to mention that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Senate and possibly the House as well are also conducting their own separate investigations. So what good did any of this do? We can't buy Trump's excuses as stated justifications for firing Comey. They don't make any sense. They are totally self-contradictory. They contradict what his own surrogates have said on his behalf. They contradict what he himself said about Comey in the past. I guess he loved Comey when Comey was the guy who threw him the election. But he hated Comey almost a year ago when Comey was the guy who appeared to be doing the opposite because he declined to recommend that Hillary Clinton be prosecuted. And now Trump has come full circle. And he's back to hating Comey again because Comey is a thorn in his side. This may not be the constitutional crisis that some Trump detractors are making it out to be, but it's bad enough. It just goes to show what I and countless others have been saying about Trump all along. The man's just not that bright. Don't get me wrong. There are different forms of intelligence in different areas, different fields of human endeavor. Maybe, maybe Trump is a genius when it comes to the real estate business and sundry other industries in which he's made money over the decades. Although. From what I hear, it's actually questionable just how successful he's really been, even in the business world. But whatever the case may be, when it comes to governing, when it comes to public policy, when it comes to politics and law and running a damn country, the man just does not have much up here. And this Comey thing is only the latest example. God, another four years of this crap. I don't know if I can take it. I don't know. <laughs> I give up. I give up. You know, I, I've been putting out these videos, trying to be as level-headed and as calm as possible in talking about Trump. And you know, it, it's just not working. It's just not working. So from now on, I'm gonna keep it 100% real. I'm just gonna say exactly what I really think about Trump and uh, hope someone actually gives a damn.